So thank you all for coming. You know, this spring, we reached one of the milestones that I had set personally for myself when I came back to the Rocket Center. I had three missions that I specifically wanted to accomplish while I was here. One of those was to develop a community support organization under the Rocket Center, which is underway. The second was to develop a professional docent core of NASA emeritus people, those who had worked in the program, whether at NASA or contractors. And tonight, you saw those people in those white lab coats. You have made my dream come true, NASA emeritus. Thank you. And the third dream I had for support for the Rocket Center, to make sure that this place lasts for 100 years, was to develop an alumni association. As of the end of our summer, for summer season in 2014, we have had 650,000 graduates from Space Camp in 32 years. <laughs> Thank you. to see those people stay together. If you've ever, if all of you alums know what I'm talking about. Even before there was texting and, you know, email, you guys from the early 80s stuck together. You used to beg your parents at Christmas time for phone cards so you could call your buddies from other states and other countries, I remember. But this organization of people has now had these years to grow up and to become the next generation of space leaders. And this year, Several of those people took the initiative to step up to form the Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board. Thank you. You're going to be seeing more from our Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board. We're going to introduce those people. But I can't tell you, they didn't just organize and decide who's going to be president and so on. Already this year, in under a year's time, this board has come together and done major fundraising. They have sponsored and reached the goal for our very first crowdsourcing campaign on Indiegogo to fund the return of the shuttle trainer aircraft, NASA 945, to Shuttle Park later on this year. Thank you, alumni board. And there was one more thing on my list when I first came back to the Rocket Center. Because back years ago when I was here, 86 to 1990 as director of Space Camp, we used to have corporate teams. So any of you that know anything about the way we got to space as a nation know that it wasn't just NASA. A lot of people who don't really know much about how we did this just thought it was just NASA, all NASA guys got it done. But as you well know, there is a tremendous professional trustworthy contractor base that makes a lot of that dream come true. So this year, we reinstated having corporate teams at Space Camp, and each week of the summer is a different corporation-sponsored week. All summer long, each team has a different corporate name, and this week, we are honored for it to be the week of ATK. Very exciting week for us. In case you don't know, if you've seen the new SLS, America's Next Great Ship, that's going to make the next giant leap in space, ATK are the guys that build the solid rocket boosters that have had an additional segment added. And maybe Charlie Precourt will tell us a little bit more about that. So they're a very integral part. And we are here at Space Camp developing, Charlie, your next generation workforce. We're taking our role very seriously in doing this. And by having these corporate teams every week, we're letting these young people understand it's not just NASA, and it's not us and them for a NASA program and a commercial space program. It's us. It's we now. And I think having these corporate teams is really a way to make them understand how we all work together to make this happen. Thank you, ATK, for being with us tonight and for sponsor. <laughs> I'd like to recognize just a few distinguished guests who are here tonight. We have the members of the Alabama Space Science Exhibit Commission, which is my board of directors and bosses, and our chairman is here tonight, Colonel Roosevelt Lewis. Colonel Lewis, will you just stand for a moment, please? You look so great tonight. <laughs> Colonel Lewis is responsible. He's a second generation Tuskegee Airman himself, having been taught by Chappie James, when he was instructed as an Air Force pilot, a very young Air Force pilot at that time. 
and he is responsible for bringing tonight our fabulous honored guest, the Tuskegee Airmen. Thank you, Chairman Lewis. <laughs> We're also honored to have with us State Representative Howard Sandiford and his wife, Dot, Mr. Tony Zana and his wife, Ms. Anne Marie, Mr. Craig Naudain, and Lieutenant Colonel Allison Miller and her children, all members of the Alabama Space Science Exhibit Commission. Thank you for your patience, kindness, and support of the staff here at the Rocket Center. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> also tonight, from NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, we have the director of the Engineering Directorate, Mr. Chris Singer, and his wife, Jody Singer, who is the manager of Marshall flight, Space Flight Programs and Partnerships Office. So if you've got any technical questions, my Geeker alumni friends, this is the guy to answer all your questions. We also have the former director of Space Camp and the current lead external relations specialist at Marshall, someone very dear to us and part of our family forever, Marshall Lindstrom. It's also great to have with us, of course, the Tuskegee Airmen, the members of the Space Camp Hall of Fame, the Space Camp Alumni Advisory Board, and also joining us tonight are five astronauts. Colonel Charles Precourt, Captain Hoot Gibson, Dr. Don Thomas, Mr. Ken Ham, and Dr. Owen Garrett and his wife, Eve. Special thanks goes out to the wonderful Dimity ladies who made these fabulous table arrangements for you. And those folks, they just help us all the time. Thank you, Dimity. So now, a very important item for this evening's agenda, which we just decided to announce tonight just a few days ago. As I mentioned, Dr. Owen Garriott and Eve Garriott are here with us this evening. This longtime friend of the center, Dr. Garriott, and contributor, who is beloved by all of our crew and trainers and staff, has decided that he and his family will create for us a new challenge which is very important to all of the alumni of Space Camp. Dr. Garriott and his family are going to bring us the foundation donation of what will eventually be a $10 million STEM scholarship, college scholarship, which will be partially eligible to Space Camp alumni. So for the first time, we can not only bring you here as Space Camp trainees and send you home thinking of the future, you can also look back to the Space and Rocket Center and to the STEM for Space Scholarship Program for College that has now been founded by Dr. Garriott by his generous contribution. Thank you for making a new step forward, a great leap forward for Space Camp alumni. <laughs> Dr. Garriott, will you please stand, please? please. one more really fun special announcement tonight. Tonight we're joined by a longtime friend and contributor to the center who is well beloved by our crew, the crew trainer, Space Camp alumni, and who is a member of the original Werner von Braun Apollo Moon Team. We introduced earlier someone in our Hall of Fame, Dr. George von Tiesenhausen, and Dr. von T when I came back here less than three and a half years ago, was still teaching in space camp. Dr. Von T celebrated this year his 100th birthday. Will you please help me in singing happy birthday to Dr. Von T? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dr. Von T. Happy birthday. And to honor this milestone with Dr. Von T and your contribution to us here at Space Camp, we are happy to announce that every year from now on, one of the Space Camp scholarships that you're supporting, by the way, with your silent auction money back here, will hereafter be known as the Dr. George Von Tiesenhausen Scholarship for Excellence in Engineering. <laughs> Our first speaker tonight is Mr. Chris Singer, the director of the Engineering Directorate for the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center here in Huntsville. Chris leads an organization of 1,400 civil servants 
and 1,200 support contractors. Do you see the proportions there and why we're so impressed and why we want to teach everyone that it's not just NASA, that it takes all of us? His team is responsible for the hardware and software associated with space transportation, spacecraft systems, science instruments, and payloads that are all under development at Marshall. Chris began his NASA career at Marshall in 1983 as a rocket engine specialist, big surprise, in the Structures and Propulsion Laboratory, going on to do critical work on space shuttle main engines and propulsion. He received several NASA awards in his career, including the Presidential Rank Award for Meritorious Excellence. He's a native of Nashville, Tennessee, and holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Great, Tobin, huh? My son's a mechanical engineer. Um, he now resides here in Huntsville with his wife, Jody, and their three children. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Chris Singer. Thank you, Deborah. This is uh, truly an honor for me to be here to represent Patrick and the Marshall Space Flight Center and, and, our, and our whole long community of relationships with the uh, Space and Rocket Center. And this venue is, is just, uh, you know, it's, it's just wonderful to be here anytime. Um, I was here about two months ago with about 150 college interns who, who had showed up that that was their first day. And it, it's kind of emotional because I really love the students and I love interacting with the students and, and, and I love the business that we're in. It's been a, it's been a great ride. And, and to be here under this as uh, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson calls it these great cathedrals uh, that we have built uh, and that to now be working on that next generation uh, is, is, a, uh, is truly an honor. So with that, I was going to uh, also really appreciate the fact that we have had a long relationship with the uh, Space and Rocket Center here, and um, and it's, it's it's just an honor to, to see all of these all of these alumni and and the folks here and the ones who are about to be inducted, and uh, and so it's my pleasure then to just give you a few words of where we're at uh, moving forward as we as we go. You know, Marshall. What's the next chart? We're not doing charts. We're we're doing charts. There we are, okay. So Marshall's got a great uh, diverse set of capability and that's what, what makes my job so easy. We have great clarity of purpose and we're in the middle of some of the most exciting parts of what the agency does. From human exploration, from ISS operations, to moving people into space and then including the, the science aspects of, of uh, astrophysics and heliophysics as well as earth science. And so, next chart, please. Can't figure out how to keep up. So, working on the station, right now, you know, we've been working the station 24-7 here at Marshall. Uh, the, the Payload Operations Center is where all of the science uh, is set up. You know, any scientist, has his, his experiment comes through Marshall to be set up, the training, et cetera, through, through, through the lab. And then they get to operate. So, we have operators on, on, uh, on full time even during the furlough. <laughs> so uh, station couldn't be de, you know, de worked there when we were dealing with that. And so we had a great, a great team uh, that's doing that work. Uh, we're also doing the, the ECLIS operations, the ECLIS development. Um, we, yes, we do have to recycle all of the fluids that we can find up there. <clears throat> and it's very entertaining when we bring the students in and we ask them to help. So. This is, uh, this is one of our, one of, one of our, our really, really uh, important next steps is, is moving from, to, to be able to move into, into further orbits and, and deeper exploration, which has been the dream of, uh, of all of us, is, is really to get to a life support system that doesn't require the kinds of uh, reservice and resupply that we currently uh, require. So next chart. Just one quick blurb on the, on the uh, on the science side of our of our work, it's it's about 15 to 20 percent of what we do, but it's it's a really important element because it keeps us sharp, it keeps us uh, um, thinking about what the possibilities are, and that that's really what I believe is is the, the the greatest value of the exploration program is considering the possibility. It's the unknown and it's reaching forward 
uh, into that. And the next chart, I think, is James Webb Telescope, which is the next great observatory. You know, Marshall had a really high, you know, large role in developing and delivering the Hubble and the Chandra, the two that are currently uh, uh, the, the large observatories. And, and James Webb is another one that we've had great involvement in terms of doing the testing of the mirrors and the, uh, the structural backplane. And that was done just recently. And so we're, we're still in the middle of, uh, of delivering those types of systems. So the next chart. And now for the, hopefully, the big, the big, the big flagship mission that we're in the middle of is the Space Launch uh, Vehicle. And as Deborah said, it, it, is a, uh, it is a combination of both heritage and future uh, hardware that we're currently developing. We've taken advantage of everything we learned from this vehicle, from 30 years plus of shuttle operations and the, sh and the shuttle hardware, and applying it in a, in a, in a method that's going to allow us to get deeper into space and actually be that, that uh, vehicle that'll take us, take humans to Mars. And it's coming in multiple phases, but, but right now the, the point I want to make is we're just completing, we're at the midpoint of the development program, we're completing the CDRs. We had the CDR board uh, just this week on the, uh, on the booster element, and we had the core stage last week. So we are fast on the path to, to get this vehicle at the launch pad and certified. What you see behind me are some of the piece parts that are going into it. We're already building the the first uh, structural test articles for the core stage down at, uh, down at Michoud. So let's go to the next chart. I think, yeah, so Michoud Assembly Fields facility is up and operational. Uh, it, is, it has a, a great facility that is actually not just doing uh, SLS, but it's also building uh, Orion hardware there. So the capsule is, is built there as well. So we are, we are fast on the pace to get this system to the, uh, to the launch pad because so many I still hear in the in the in the halls and in the media think that NASA ended when the shuttle landed in 2011, and and uh, so we we really got to get the re-inspiration going with having uh, having a system that is humans launched out of this country off of this launch pad. Next chart, and one of the things that's really exciting about what's going on is taking advantage of some new technology. Now that's a picture of a bunch of piece parts, and they don't mean anything, except. For this, uh, you hear in the news a lot of buzz around 3D printing or additive manufacturing, and it used to be something that was done for rapid prototyping, little plastic models, allows you to show somebody what you're doing. Well, it's, it's, it has become a staple of what we're going to have for the next generation systems. And the value that it brings to the table is that it's much quicker and actually cheaper. You, you, can, you can get a, uh, at a, a turbine in, a p impeller or a piece part coming out of a system that normally takes a forging or a casting in six to eight months, we can get it in two to three weeks. And that's going to change the way we do development. And that's where I'm really exciting because today our, many of our systems take a long time and, and the, uh, the, the community gets a little impatient with our stakeholders get a little impatient when things take five, six, seven, ten years. And uh, so this is really going to open the opportunity in the trade space for us to get a development program that's much more in a, uh, in a timely fashion, put some real challenges on the engineers because we're going to have to let go of some of our comfort that we've gathered over 30 years of experience. Uh, but, but that's what we're about. Uh, we, we're not going to shirk from the challenge. So next chart. And so I just, I just wanted to quickly end here with, with a couple of points. The, 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 the picture down in the lower corner is, is the picture that inspired most, most of us probably. Uh, the, uh, the moon shot when, uh, when, when we had the uh, picture of Earth and that little blue marble that was sitting back there. And I'm really anxious for us to set the stage for a next generation of shots of the Earth from some other planet. And, uh, and Cassini took a picture uh, a while back that, was, that you could see the Earth in one of its rings, and, and you won't be able to see it on the picture, but that's, that's kind of what it's representing. So I'm really, uh, you know, really looking forward to creating that next inspirational opportunity. And uh, the last chart is basically says the same thing. We, we, really, we really don't know what we don't know, and we look forward to finding it out. So I want to thank the, the, uh, 
Dr. Barnhart and the audience for the opportunity to speak and, uh, and really, uh, really want to thank all of the uh, honorees here and uh, appreciate your help and the, all of the supporters, especially Dr. Garrett now, um, very, 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 very much appreciate the support for this facility and this, this program. It's, it's extreme value. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I don't think any of us could hear too much about SLS right now. Um, we're all pretty pumped up. <laughs> uh, we've been calling Todd May Captain May since he's going to be the captain of our next great ship. <laughs> so I think the, the cheerleaders are all here for you. So call on us and be guaranteed that we're going to send you a workforce that will take us all the way to Mars, I guarantee. Um, it's truly my pleasure to tell the amazing story of the projects and missions that are underway at Marshall Space Flight Center and for the launch of Space Launch System, SLS. Just keep saying it all the time, everywhere you go, to everybody you meet, SLS. NASA's back in business, SLS, Orion. And by the way, in case you don't know it, the first unmanned flight of the Orion capsule, which they're calling EFT-1, on a Delta Heavy, built right here on the river, in Decatur, is scheduled for December. So when you go back to your communities, you let people know we're about to start flying, and by 2021, we're gonna have manned space flight going again. I can't wait. Speaking of our future in space flight, our next speaker is leading one of the teams who's responsible for helping launch America's next great ship. The Vice President and General Manager of Space Launch Division for ATK's Aerospace Group and former NASA shuttle astronaut, Colonel Charlie Precourt. Under Colonel Precourt's leadership, ATK is working to support NASA's human-rated spaceflight programs, including the use of ATK's five-segment solid rocket boosters for initial testing with the SLS and the main launch abort motor for the multipurpose crew vehicle, this, this part way up here. Before coming to ATK in 2005, Charles had a distinguished 15-year career with NASA, including 932 hours in space as part of four space shuttle missions. In addition to his duties as an astronaut, he served as deputy program manager for the International Space Station. No small feat in those days, was it, Charlie? <laughs> um, chief of the astronaut office and director of operations for NASA at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Moscow. For his many accomplishments at NASA, Charlie was inducted into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame in May of 2012. He served 23 years in the United States Air Force, retiring as a colonel in 2000. He's a native of Hudson, Massachusetts. Charlie owns a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering from the U.S. Air Force Academy, a master's in engineering management from Golden State University, and a master's in national security affairs and strategic studies from the U.S. Naval War College. I really approve of that degree. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and please help me welcome to the stage Charlie Precourt. My goodness, thank you for that introduction. Are you all having some good fun here tonight? Excellent. Excellent. Well, I am really honored to be with you and to represent ATK, but more than that, uh, to speak to you a little bit about a theme that I, just keeps coming back to my mind and it's inspiration. And if you aren't already a little bit inspired tonight, um, you need to take a little bit closer look at what's going on around us. And inspiration is more than just an emotion and a word for us. It's really the impact that it has on our lives. And uh, it touches this new workforce that is here tonight uh, in the Space Camp graduates uh, that have passed in recent years, and I'm really, really excited, Deborah, about what you just said about this being our future workforce, and it's very critical to us. And so, as I think about my theme of inspiration, I want to acknowledge some very special people here tonight that are going to be acknowledged many times. Uh, certainly, congratulations to our three inductees of the Hall of Fame, uh, 600,000 graduates of this space camp. Can you imagine? Uh, and they are all uh, doing great things. The first graduates have d gone on to inspire uh, the follow-on graduates in many, many ways, and they touch our lives across a multitude of different disciplines, specialties, and across the world. Uh, tonight, Kaya Tunser um, 
is found funding 6,200 scholarships. He's the founder of the Space Camp in Turkey. You'll hear a lot more about uh, these inductees tonight, but he's truly a vi was a visionary and uh, has taken the inspiration of the space program across into a country like Turkey. Uh, Samantha Cristofoletti uh, from the Italian Air Force, uh, beginning for ESA her sp first space flight this December uh, to the International Space Station, and Michelle Hamm, our own Michelle Hamm from the Flight Control Center originally in Johnson Space Center. Michelle, Frank Culbertson called me this afternoon and asked me to express his uh, congratulations as you worked with him and uh, the Space Station Control Center. And think of the inspiration that she's taken away from this program as the founder of a, a STEM initiative called Higher Orbits. And I want to thank, uh, you know, the, the Rocket Center and the, um, the, uh, the whole uh, crew here for bringing my former colleagues together. Uh, Don Thomas, a classmate of mine from the class of 90 in the astronaut program. Uh, Hoot Gibson, uh, uh, who I'll spend a little bit more time on here in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken Ham, uh, who worked with us uh, as a pilot and commander of the shuttle as we were assembling the space program, and Owen Garriott, of course. Um, what inspiration, Owen. Thank you so much for that gift to this very, very important cause tonight. Um, and, and I want to, uh, before I come back to a little story I want to share about having the privilege to fly with Luke Gibson, just a couple more acknowledgments. Um, when I joined the military, um, we were in the middle of the Vietnam War, and um, it was a different era and a different time, and I'm so proud that this country has come to recognize in a greater way over time the sacrifices of our men and women in uniform. It's become a very recognized country. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I hope those of you who have been around as long as I have have noticed that it's more common to hear the, the simple words, thank you for your service. And I am truly inspired to be in the company of the Tuskegee Airmen tonight, and I hope you are too, and all I want to say is thank you for your service. Very, very inspiring. And the inspiration is a, is a powerful, powerful force for us going into the, especially for this next generation, I had, if you're interested, I had the opportunity to present a TED Talk. For those of you who like TED Talks, you can Google my name on, you, or go to YouTube and look for the talk that I gave. It's called Why Mars? And it's all about the inspiration that it brings to us. Um, and we all in this community ought to be thinking about that question, why? Um, because we do so much, and it is sometimes so uh, overwhelming how much gets done through the inspiration of the space program that it's hard to articulate. And I gave it a try in, in that talk, and, and what I think about is how uh, the inspiration spreads across our society. Uh, it creates the inspiration that brings the next generation of aerospace scientists and engineers right out of this very institution at Space Camp. It strengthens our industrial base that makes the United States and keeps us the world leader in aerospace. It truly is our future workforce, and how important that is, but it also, it's not just about the workforce, it's the products they create. And it also brings an inspiration that joins countries in an international partnership and international cooperation. Space Station model of working together in space is a tremendous one. And all I can recall is the tremendous changes in my life having been a fighter pilot in the Cold War in Germany, only to find myself flying with the very Soviet officers who were on the opposite side of the border and flying MiG-23s, wagging wings at each other in the Cold War, only to find ourselves flying together in, in space a few years later. And so this inspiration is incredibly important to our next generation. And what I find in it is that this uh, is a powerful force to get uh, folks to do more than they would have thought they were capable of doing uh, without that inspiration. And they achieve great things. And that's what you'll see in the inductees tonight. So ATK proudly sponsors this activity because it is so important to the success of our programs today and the future success of us as a company in the future. And I'm just very, very privileged to be able to represent our company here tonight to tell you about this and share it with you. Um, the, the space program truly uh, creates a path to knowledge, economic growth, and a better life for all of us. We feel that, we understand it, we believe in it because we're so close to it. Um, and I'm going to close uh, my comments by sharing two videos with you. But before I do, I really want to 
to uh, take a, a little bit of a detour to, to where Deborah started, which is recognizing the competition between the, the Navy and the Air Force. Have any of you not heard of the inter service rivalry that's out there? And so, uh, Hoot Gibson, Navy commander, very, I was extremely privileged to be able to fly with Hoot on the first docking mission to the Russian space station Mir. And uh, the, probably the most difficult part of flying that mission was learning Russian. And so Hoot and I and the crew had the opportunity to learn some Russian from a native Russian speaker, a woman by the name of Tatiana. And so we'd go in regularly to sit and uh, learn phrases in Russian. And one of the phrases she was very proud to be teaching us was a little bit for her own benefit, which was, my Samaya Lubimaya Uchitelnitsa, which means my favorite teacher. She really wanted us to be saying that every day to her as we came into the class. Well, Hoot's really good at studying, so he found out that if you put an M in front of the word Uchitelnitsa, which means teacher, Muchitelnitsa means terrorist. <laughs> And so my Asamai Lubima Muchi Tilnitsa would become, would become my favorite torturer. <laughs> and so <laughs> we would come in saying that every day, and of course she would say, Nyet, 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 you've got it wrong. <laughs> so all of that is really a story to relate to how important our personal relationships are uh, and how privileged I felt to be a part of a major shift in the situation on the planet Earth. Uh, where before we had started to fly together in the space program, we were bipolar enemies, and today, uh, hopefully, we will continue to have a very, very strong relationship with all of our international partners, including the Russians, to make this go even further. And who knows what the young generation is going to have for challenges in front of them, but this project is a, such a key factor in giving them the inspiration to reach for more than they otherwise might and to succeed in those huge challenges that are coming before them in the future. So let me close with a couple of short videos. Uh, one is a, a personal experience of uh, flight inside the space shuttle, which I'll cherish forever. And then the other is a glimpse into the future. And when you see these two in contrast, one after the other, you'll understand why I often say to the next generation, I've had a tremendous privileged opportunity, but I trade places with you in a heartbeat. So if we could roll the first video, please. tremendous ride to space. It was an incredible machine, and now we're taking it one step further. I want to give you a glimpse into the future of what we're building right here at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, we're privileged, as, as it's the uh, folks at ATK, to build the booster, and as Deborah pointed out, we're building the follow-on to the launch abort system that's right above us. This vehicle, as it sits on the launch pad, is going to weigh 7 million pounds. It'll produce 9 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, and it's a phenomenal amount of power. Uh, so here you see a, a typical, what we expect to be a flight sequence to go to deep space, the separation of the, the Orion crew capsule uh, from its, its launch vehicle, and then the Orion and its own propulsion system beginning its departure uh, to deep space, unfurling the, uh, the solar arrays. And of course, this system is going to be very capable of taking us to multiple deep space destinations. 
We've contemplated asteroids. We're working on how to exploit the vehicle to study asteroids at close up. The moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos, which are critically important for a future understanding of the solar system, they also don't have much gravity, so they don't need as much energy for us to take to space with us to get there. So they're great precursors for an eventual surface Mars landing. So lots to look forward to in the future, and we're very proud to be a part of it. So thank you for uh, having me here tonight, uh, and let's uh, give these young generation folks that are coming up on aerospace all the boost we can. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You know, you always try to think of what's a good gift for your speakers, and it's always really hard to think of something that, what does an astronaut need anyway? Um, but what we have for you today, Charlie, is your former ATK, I mean your future ATK teammates, the Space Camp ATK team that graduated today. I was going to ask him, you know those things are reusable, right? Solids are reusable. So who is it that brings them back home for you, Charlie? Yeah, just wondering about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We can, we can stand the competition, not, not to worry about that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Vice President of Operations for the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, a guy who worked for me 25 years ago when I was director of Space Camp, a 27-year veteran who has dedicated his loyalty, his life, and his genius and kindness and passion for this program, my friend and our colleague, the director of Space Camp and vice president for operations, Michael Flashbart. As you've noticed on your uh, program, this year's Hall of Fame induction ceremony began a bit differently than it has in the past. And before we begin, there are a couple of special announcements that need to be made. The center is pleased to have here tonight several members of the Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board, which was newly formed this year. The Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board is a group of passionate and dedicated Space Camp Aviation Challenge and now Robotics Camp alumni who have decided to dedicate their time and resources to marshalling the alumni community across the globe in support of the advancement of Space Camp through marketing, fundraising, and volunteer initiatives. This group is working closely with advocates and friends from the Space Camp Hall of Fame group and other alumni outfits to build a digital and physical network that reconnects alumni with their teammates. And you can see what they have already been doing and, uh, and joined by visiting spacecampalumni.com. And so, to begin tonight's induction ceremony, I would like to welcome to the stage two of the founding members of the Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board to present the first annual AAB Awards. Joining me on stage are Ben Chandler of Knoxville, Tennessee, and Kate Schiltz Ditchen of Atlanta, Georgia. Ben is the co-chairman of the Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board and is a four-time alumni of Space Camp an aviation challenge. Kate serves as the Space Camp Alumni Advancement Board Fundraising Committee Chair and was a seven-time Space Camp alumna, crew trainer, and also represented Space Camp as a youth ambassador, along with Dr. Deborah Barnhart, to the Soviet Union in 1988. Thank you, Mike, for the introduction. First off, we just want to say it's an honor to be up here to uh, give out these awards to some very dedicated individuals that have given a massive amount of their time and resources towards the betterment of the Space Camp alumni community and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. So we want to say thank you to them. Uh, we know that they have full-time jobs, families, and a life outside of here, but for the last nine months, uh, this has been their second full-time job. and. There's really no way to uh, say thank you for all the time and work that you've put into launching and mobilizing our community. So without further ado, 
Kate and I are going to uh, honor a few special people tonight, and uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd hold your appa uh, applause until we get all four, uh, all three of them up here on stage tonight. So thank you. The first person we'd like to thank tonight is someone um, who has made an outstanding contribution uh, to outreach for uh, Space and Rocket Center camps. Um, this is the this person has worked tirelessly um, to further our cause, and I think all of us would agree that she has put in far more hours than required, um, and we cannot thank her enough. Um, the 2014 Space Camp Aviation Challenge Spirit Award we'd like to present to Whitney Zatskin. <laughs> Whitney, if you could join us on stage. Uh, the next award that we're going to give out is the 2014 Space Camp Pinnacle Award. And uh, this gentleman uh, has served on uh, one of our communities, or one of our committees uh, for the Alumni Advancement Board and has worked uh, to design our mission patch, our logos, and a lot of our print material that we have uh, used so far this year. And uh, we truly appreciate his work and his talent. Uh, he's a true artist and uh, we really are thankful to have you involved uh, with our community. And uh, so for the 2014 Space Camp Pinnacle Award uh, for an outstanding alumni innovation, uh, that award goes to Brian Matney. <laughs> Brian, if you're out there, can you join us on stage? Here he comes. <laughs> Running. Our next recipient uh, could not be here tonight uh, because of illness, um, but she, um, along with the other members of the alumni community, um, have she has done more for outstanding alumni fundraising than anyone else on our team. Um, we're so sorry she couldn't be here tonight. But the 2014 Space Camp Foundations Award for Outstanding Alumni Fundraising and Furthering the USSRC and Space Camp Missions goes to Darlene Perry Smith, who is watching this live. The final award tonight goes, uh, is uh, the CEO Leadership Award. And the gentleman that we're presenting this award to tonight uh, truly has treated this as a second job. It's a passion to him. You can tell in his work, his work ethic. Uh, he treats this um, incredibly uh, uh, passionately. He uh, has worked tirelessly towards mobilizing the alumni community. And he's a large reason that we're all standing here today. So uh, without further ado, the 2014 CEO Leadership Award goes to John Ramsey. Thank you, Ben, Kate, and, and to all the uh, AAB Award member recipients. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. 
Each year, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center solicits nominations from the general public, and there are three categories under which a person may be inducted into the Space Camp Hall of Fame. As a Space Camp or Aviation Challenge alumni, as a former crew trainer or staff member, or as a friend of the Space Camp program. To be considered for any of these categories means that you have displayed exceptional character and dedication to furthering the vision of Space Camp through your career or actions. Members of the Space Camp Hall of Fame should exhibit leadership among the Space Camp alumni community, providing guidance and encouragement for alumni to stay involved with supporting the Space Camp program and its mission. Tonight's inductees will take their place with the previous 28 inductees of achievers, pioneers, explorers, and educators who currently make up the Space Camp Hall of Fame. Our first inductee into the 2014 Space Camp Hall of Fame is Space Camp alumna Michelle, Michelle Lucas Hamm. start, Michelle Lucas Ham was in love with space. She was in second grade when she announced she was going to work for NASA. That wasn't a common dream in her industrial blue collar Indiana town. People looked at me really funny when they found out I wanted to work for NASA, Michelle said. They thought she'd decide next week she wanted to be a lawyer, a doctor, or a dolphin trainer, but she never wavered. It was my beacon, she said, my light at the end of the tunnel. Then she found out about Space Camp. Her family saved for two years to send her. Space Camp just further hooked me on space, Michelle said. I got to be around rockets with other kids who were interested in space. Space Academy 1 in 1991 and Space Academy 2 in 1994 followed, with Michelle attending both on scholarships. I've always been so grateful for the scholarships. There was no way my parents could have afforded to send me without them, she said. Michelle's major influences in her life were her mother, Lynette Lucas, and teachers who encouraged her to do what was hard. My mother taught me life wasn't always easy and that it's okay to fail. My mom taught me that failure is not the issue. The problem is if you don't pick yourself back up. Vera Corey taught Michelle English at Hobart High School and remembers a focused, mature, and all-around good student. Hello, and welcome to Northwest Indiana. Here I am at Hobart High School where I taught for 30 years. And Michelle Lucas was one of my students. She graduated in 1996, but I first met her as a sophomore in my sophomore enriched English class. And she even then told me about her future plans. And then I saw her again as a senior in my college bound classes. And by then she had already decided she wanted to work for the US space program. Midway through her senior year, I clearly remember a meeting in my classroom. Uh, Michelle had requested that she could leave school early, and at that time, schools in our area did not do that. Michelle made her case that she should leave school early and go on to college. Um, she had already completed her required courses in Indiana for graduation, and she talked passionately about it was time for her to move on, and she did. Uh, to Purdue University. She did really well there, so, and, and I was very, very happy for two reasons. One, because uh, I was really cheering her on, hoping she would succeed, but also because I didn't want to be wrong in front of my colleagues, and as my students can tell you, I don't like being wrong. After that, she went on to Embry-Riddle uh, Aeronautical University, and then even on to the space program, and all the naysayers had to believe. One time she came into my classrooms, and presented information about careers in math and science. And she was very dynamic as a speaker. I, I was very pleased. And I especially wanted uh, uh, my girls, the, the female students, to listen to her uh, when, at a time when that was not something girls considered. When the Space Camp Media Liaison, Pat Ammons, uh, asked me to describe Michelle, I immediately said she was very passionate about her goals, uh, very focused, and dedicated, very hard worker. I know she had some personal challenges, and yet here she is on your, on your Hall of Fame, just as she was in our Hall of Scholars here uh, back in 1996, when she was one of our top students. It pleases me now that she has chosen a new path 
She is now founder and president of Higher Orbits, an organization she created to support students in the fields of science, math, and technology through her personal inspirational story, as well as scholarship opportunities. She has moved on to help others pursue their dreams. Michelle, I just want to say how proud I am of you and everything you've accomplished. But I also want to point out that you have instructed and taught so many astronauts that in the end, you became a teacher and I got my way. Thank you for sharing. Uh, good luck in all your future ventures. And again, thanks for thinking of me after all these years. Goodbye and good luck. When she's talking to students now, Michelle always mentions Space Camp and what it meant to shaping her life. Space Camp helped me hone my passion. In honor of Michelle's work in helping so many others reach for the stars, just as she did, we honor her tonight as an inductee into the Space Camp Hall of Fame. Please welcome to the stage. Michelle Lucas Ham. And I just told Michelle the framed print that she was presented with has a space camp flag. And we flew, I think, about 50 of those on a mission. So she's going to tell you who flew, also <laughs> flew, and took them up into space. And he doesn't even know he took them up there, I don't yeah, think. Probably not. No. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, for those of you who know me, me being at a loss of words is pretty unusual. And yet here I am with, I wrote some remarks on my phone, because of course, you know, we're all electronic. And I'm, I'm just blown away. Thank you. And if, let me start with the thank yous, because I'm afraid I'll forget. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you for all of this. I believe that life is about a, the journey, but more importantly, the journey is about the people along the way. And so I feel so fortunate to now be part of this very special family, a subset of a even more incredible, very large, 650,000 person large family. So, wow, what a treat. Trevor told me that really I could just start with dot, 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 acceptance, remarks, dot, 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 thank you, and, and go, because that's, that's what the script says, and I see it here. And there's another person in the back lobbying who shall remain nameless that my speech go at least 16 minutes. So that person can lose that distinction. I can promise you it won't. <laughs> but I'd be remiss if I hadn't given him a little grief about it. Thank you to Space Camp. Thank you to my friends and family who are here, who supported me, who made my, to my mom, who made my astronaut costume out of a white sweatsuit and plastic bags, and I'm really glad that photo didn't end up in the, in the montage. I was very fortunate to have people along the way believe in me, people like Mrs. Corey, who, that, that really got to me. I, <laughs> I haven't seen Mrs. Corey in a while, and she was truly a mentor of mine, even though she wasn't a STEM teacher. And I think that's something that's key, is that we're all mentors to students, whether we're STEM or not. If you think that when you're passionate about something, you're not inspiring students, you're wrong. It's the passion that inspires students. Vincent van Gogh sent, said, for my part, I know nothing with any certainty, but the sight of the stars makes me dream. I've dreamt for as long as I can remember 
while looking at the stars. And space camp was one of those dreams at one point, and it was almost, it seemed unattainable, like I couldn't attend. And then my mom and my dad were, they scrimped and they saved to get me here the first time after I watched the movie, which by the way, I watched again recently, and I think I'm gonna have to go back and watch again, just because now I'm feeling some nostalgia. But then after that, I knew that there was no way that I could come back. We just couldn't afford it. And thanks to the scholarships and for everyone here for supporting those, the scholarship fund, I was able to come back. This is where my passion really, sorry, I'm gonna go with the, I'm gonna go with the pun. This is where my passion really took off. I loved space. My mom took me to the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago every chance she got. They had about four space things, and I could tell you every letter of every plaque that was in there, because I loved it so much. And so coming here, it was, it was almost like a pilgrimage. I felt fortunate to be surrounded by people who loved space as much as I did. I've been very fortunate along the way to meet some amazing folks. I got to work at NASA for 10 years, got to work with the likes of Charlie and Don, and I never actually got to work with Hoot, but I've become rather fond of Hoot, too, since, you know, since I've gotten to know him here. They mentioned the 124 flag, and there's actually a really funny story about that. I had spent a bunch of years training the Japanese flight controllers and instructors for STS-123 and 124. It's one of my jobs. And then, lo and behold, who goes and gets assigned to STS-124? <laughs> uh, Ken and I had gotten engaged about a month prior, and then he got assigned to STS-124. So to, to space camp here, you guys are like, oh, that, that's cool, it was the flag that, that Ken flew, and it is cool. Uh, but for me, that was one of my first space shuttle crews that I got the joy of, of training. I won't tell you who is the only person who showed up late to my class. Um, you can figure that out on your own. But I did get the pleasure of meeting great individuals that are here as Hall of Famers, as alumni. Um, Charlie, thanks for the words from Frank. I was Frank's sports score deliverer while he was on Expedition 3. I like to claim I was the original Aaron Andrews. Um, but along the lines, I've enjoyed my career in space, and then, as was mentioned, I started Higher Orbits. And my, jo my goal with Higher Orbits is to inspire the next generation as well. Um, and it wouldn't have begun if it weren't for here. I believe in pay it forward. I believe in pay it back. I just came back from running some events in my hometown. Or for those of you who are of the younger demographic, maybe you know Racket, Random Acts of kind Kindness. I really believe that it's all of our job to inspire the next generation, and that's what Space Camp has done for 650,000 students. Whether they've all go on to become rocket scientists or not, that's not what's important. What's important is that they find their passion, and this is a place to find your passion. So I thank all of you for um, this amazing, this amazing cosmic, I, I'm, I'm, there's that loss for words. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it, and uh, hope to see you all again. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, for your inspiring words. Our second inductee into the 2014 Space Camp Hall of Fame is Space Camp alumna and future International Space Station crew member uh, Air For uh, Italian Air Force Captain Samantha Cristoforetti. Samantha Cristoforetti's life journey began in Milan, Italy in 1977. As a child, she loved the typical things in life, birthday cakes, playing in the snow, being with friends and family but it didn't take long for her imagination to take over. She found herself looking into the skies and wondering about life beyond, whether she was checking out a moon rock or creating and building something. She's the first to tell you that she was probably the only young lady in her little town who had an interest in space. By the time she was a senior in high school, she found herself in the United States, St. Paul, Minnesota to be exact as a foreign exchange student, and that's how she made her way to space camp. No doubt, space camp played a major role in her life. Well, 
I had been passionate about space and dreaming of going to space and becoming an astronaut since uh, as long as I can remember. I mean, since I was a little child. And um, at that point, I was uh, 18 year old. Um, I was an exchange student in Minnesota, so I was having already this incredibly exciting experience of being in a, in a foreign country, learning a new language. Um, and then I don't even remember. I saw an advertisement of space camp somewhere, and I remember, you know, the the woman I was staying with, the host mother, was very much aware of my passion for space, you know. I, and I just looked at it, and I, I raised up my eyes to her, and, and she's like, "You want to go?" And I'm like, "Yes, I want to go." <laughs> and then I, I arrived there, and it was this this amazing, uh, amazing experience. I mean, that's the greatest time I've ever had, I had ever had in my life up to that point. Samantha graduated from Liceo Scientifico in Trento, Italy in 1996. In 2001, she moved on to Munich, Germany, where she received a master's degree in mechanical engineering and joined the Italian Air Force. Then it was on to the Italian Air Force Academy in Naples, Italy. Her career in the Italian Air Force led her to fighter fundamentals training, but space was always her first love. In May of 2009, the European Space Agency selected her for the astronaut program. She completed basic astronaut training in November of 2010. In July 2012, she was assigned to the Italian Space Agency ASI mission aboard the International Space Station. Her mission? To be launched on a Soyuz spacecraft heading towards the International Space Station. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. It, it's amazing. I mean, sometimes I have to pinch my, my cheeks to, to make sure that I'm not living in a dream. That it's actually that it's actually true. Um, you know, I, I don't have to describe it. I mean, for me, it's really a lifelong dream coming through, and it, it's been a long process. I've been selected as an astronaut five years ago, and I've been in training ever since. So you know, I've, I've been growing enormously as a person, mm -hmm. as a professional, with the help of an incredible community because. Uh, uh, you know, there, there's not only astronauts, there's so many other incredibly interesting, challenging, demanding jobs that make the space program happen. And just two years ago, she visited the U.S. Space and Rocket Center to talk with space camp trainees. Her goal? To inspire them for the future. Uh, just, just, just go for it. Go for it and, uh, and maybe find ways like I did with space camp to um, you know, make sure that it grows stronger, that you keep it alive, that you uh, meet other people that have the same dream, that, you know, it becomes more real for you, you start finding your path as you, as you go along. Have faith that you will find your path and, um, and, and you know, and just try and give your best uh, at, uh, at what you're doing and one day the opportunity will come by. A dream come true. Samantha Cristoforetti, Space Camp graduate from 1995, preparing to board a Soviet rocket and head to the International Space Station. Her journey to space began here some 20 years ago, at Space Camp. And tonight, we honor her as the next inductee into the Space Camp Hall of Fame. Due to her training for her upcoming flight to the International Space Station on Expedition 4243, Samantha is unable to be with us tonight. She's actually in Star City, Russia, training and hopefully watching on our live cast over the web. Uh, however, we recently caught up with her at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas to present her with this great honor. Good evening, Huntsville, Alabama, and welcome to Houston, Texas, home of the Johnson Space Flight Center. We are here tonight for the induction ceremony in the Space Camp Hall of Fame for Samantha Cristoforetti. Now, Samantha came to Space Camp when she was 18 years old, a foreign exchange student living in the state of Minnesota. She attended Space Camp Level 2, which we now call, of course, Advanced Space Academy. As we saw in her video, she was a senior in high school when she attended Space Camp. Samantha always followed her dreams and her love for space, which is how she has ended up where she is today. Samantha is preparing for the greatest journey of her life. She's headed to the International Space Station, but before she can go there, there's one other journey that she must make, and that is to be inducted into the Space Camp Hall of Fame. I'd now like to invite Samantha Cristoforetti into our audience this evening as we prepare for this special induction ceremony. And with Samantha will be a number of our current members of the Space Camp Hall of Fame who are joining me here tonight in Houston, Texas. Samantha, welcome. Thank you so much. 
All right, and I'd like to invite you folks to come on in. We have a number who have joined us for this very special occasion tonight. Thrilled to have each of them with us to make these presentations. Samantha, you have made it. Your dreams, your goals, your hopes, your aspirations, and you are standing before us tonight as one preparing to go to Russia, complete training, and then move on to the International Space Station. What an accomplishment, what a success. The U.S. Space and Rocket Center is so very proud of you. Space Camp is proud of you. And tonight, we are thrilled and honored to induct you into the Space Camp Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. And it's the first, it, well, we are proud of you. The first thing we'd like to do is ask you to don your official jacket. And then there are other significant right. presentations tonight that need to be made on behalf of other members of the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liz. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys can take it. And here's, oh. this flew in space. Look, wow. It went on a, sh on a, uh, on a shuttle. STS-124. Yes, and the flag went in up into space. So it got there before you did, but you'll be joining it shortly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm immensely grateful and, uh, and honored. Um, as it was said, I'm, I'm preparing to go to space, and uh, I have been training to go to space for several years now. And what happens when you, when you train for a long time is that um, it becomes part of your normal life. And uh, you tend to lose that sense of excitement, of wonder, that you should really have every single day. And then, once in a while, something happens that brings it all back, right? It brings it all back into perspective, and you're overwhelmed again by that sense of, of wonder, of why, like, of saying, you know, wow, I'm, I'm really like preparing to go to space. And what it is, uh, many times, is that you, you, you get a chance to, to meet young people, boys and girls, and to see yourself and, um, and your experience and what you do through their, their eyes and their sparkles in their eyes. And uh, tonight, being here with you and wearing this jacket and thinking back to my time at Space Camp, um, it's such an experience, but even more intense, because in a way, it's like I am seeing myself and my experience as an astronaut right now through the eyes full of sparkles of my younger self, um, that 18-year-old who um, uh, came from Italy, was living in Minnesota, um, took a plane on her own, multiple planes actually, from St. Paul um, for the first time in her life and, and arrived to Space Cap and had the most amazing time of her life um, up to that point. Um, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a small village in Italy in, in the mountains in the Alps and um, from a very young age I was interested in, in space and in science and I love science fiction. and. I don't know why, but I didn't find many other girls in my little village that were interested in science <laughs> and read science fiction and wanted to go to space. <laughs> and, um, and then all of a sudden I was at space camp and everybody was like me. So for the first time, um, I found kinship in that sense and companionship and you know, with the kids in my, in my group, uh, we shared so much, we shared that dream and we were instant friends and we had the most amazing time. And I've been in contact with, with many of them for several years after Space Camp. I know that many have actually pursued careers in the aerospace business, some have not. Um, you know, back then we all dreamed of becoming astronauts, and uh, of course I think that I'm the only one who's an astronaut today, but that's not, that's not what's important. What's important is that we all as kids has had this huge, powerful passion and dream. And I think that regardless of what they all ended up doing in their lives, the fact of having that, that passion and that dream um, made them a better person. You know, just like it happened with me, I'm sure that it pushed them every single day to be the best person that they can possibly or they could possibly be. Um, and, and I think that's the greatest gift that you can give to a child or to a, to a boy or to a girl. Um, and, and Space Camp does that. It helps you uh, keep that dream alive, make it stronger. When I um, when I come back from space next year in May, it will be um, 20 years almost to the day 
uh, since the time I was in space camp. So it, it takes a while to fulfill your dream. And if you, if you have to keep it alive for such a long time, it has to be strong. And um, my belief is that going to space camp when I was 18 year old took that, that dream that I had as a child and made it even stronger. You know, in a way for the first time I could almost touch it, it became real. And I am sure that it helped me just keep it alive and strong throughout the years until actually quite recently I had a chance uh, to actually become an astronaut and start preparing to, uh, to fly to space. So um, it's really with great gratitude that um, I accept the indictment in the Space Camp Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a great honor, so thank you all very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and Samantha will follow in Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger's footstep as the, uh, she, Dottie was the first Space Camp graduate on STS-131 to blast off on Discovery into space. And there's three other Space Camp all alumna that are now at the Johnson Space Center training for future missions. So we have five astronauts amongst our Space Camp alumni. Yes, and as doctor, I heard Dr. Barnhart just say, they're all women. So there's a challenge to the guys, you know. Our third and final inductee into the 2014 Space Camp Hall of Fame is the founder of Space Camp Turkey and dear friend of the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, Mr. Kaya Tunjer. Well, these rocks uh, represent the principles of SPOSH, as well as my personal principles. Uh, this is courage in endeavor, perseverance in pursuit of the work, and our third rock represents excellence in doing what we have to do. It's because my name is Kaya, which means rock, and that's where we have these rocks which come from our excavation areas in the industrial park. My mom and dad, they really didn't see boundaries between people. They didn't see barriers. I think they looked at each person on the value of that person, on their ethics, on the way they treated other people. He thought about um, other people and, and the, the people that worked for him. He was very compassionate with the people that he worked for. Kaya Tuncher was born on April 17, 1937. He spent his childhood in Eskishahir and Balakasir, Turkey. His father taught literature at the local high school. His mother was a homemaker and a talented seamstress. Kaya Tuncher left his parents for Istanbul at the age of 11 to attend the prestigious boarding school Galatasaray. In 1957, after graduating from high school, Kaya left Turkey for California. Came to the U.S. with $80 and and a high school education, but an elite high school education. He waited on tables and worked. Finished first in his class. I know he had a job washing dishes all night long. I was prou very proud that he, that he did this, that he did it on his own. Kaya Tuncher received his civil engineering degree from Berkeley and his MBA from the University of Southern California. After a successful engineering career at Bechtel, Kaya Tuncher established his own company and in 1990, founded the Aegean Free Zone in Izmir, Turkey. 
he should be singled out as truly an exceptional leader. Yes, a man with vision. Once the Aegean Free Zone became a success, Kaya Tunchair embarked upon a new project, Space Camp Turkey. The idea of a space camp for young people came from his friend, a NASA engineer, Ismail Akbay. I was with Kaya and Ismail Akbay, and Ismail was explaining space camp to Kaya. Two hours later, Kaya is saying, oh, I think I'll do it. <laughs> this building that we're in, uh, I was told was an extra building that he had. He didn't know what to do with it. So instead of renting it, he decided to give that up and leave it for the school. But that's what it takes. People who care more for society and making the world better than just money in their pocket. Second year that it opened, it was 2001, it, Turkey went through the biggest economic crisis and global friendship started because we had the space camp but people weren't coming and so Kaya decided to create a foundation to use this facility and let, let's give scholarships to kids around the world and bring them. Well, basically what we're doing is uh, trying to develop another instrument towards world peace so that uh, young people get to know each other at, uh, at an early age and work together uh, at an early age. Because conflicts will always uh, come about, but their resolution is really the key and they'll be able to resolve them in a, in a friendly fashion as they resolve problems that we pose to them as they are flying into space in their simulators. In the first 10 years of its operation, more than 100,000 students from over 55 countries attended Space Camp Turkey. Space Camp uh, and Global Friendship has now hundreds and thousands of alumni around the world. These are students and teachers who have attended the camp and all of them are sort of like ambassadors because once they come, they have such a wonderful time and they go back to their countries, to their communities and they talk about the camp, they talk about Turkey. It's a, a legacy of uh, love and, and commitment and uh, of, of bringing people together across um, all the things that divide people. This is a part of the world where Turkey is, uh, where we see the division and the conflict often leading to violence. Um, and here we have something that is really a light. Space camp was a dream for him. And that dream, it really affected me. And I felt, if he can dream like this, I want to be part of that dream. Kaya Tunjer, Anatolian boy, international businessman, engineer. He knew every corner of this land and developed it. Now his heart beats in the running water, pulsating power, shimmering leaves, and in those who come to work here. Please welcome to the stage Kaya's wife, Mary, Kaya's granddaughter and Space Camp Turkey alumna, Sylvie Cressman and the director of Space Camp Turkey, Scott Woodham.
Yes, good evening. Kaya was the speaker in the family. This was not something I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> but I, first of all, uh, want to thank uh, Dr. Deborah Barnhart of the Space, US uh, Space and Rocket Center, uh, Charles Precourt of ATK, the sponsor of this event. Thank you for honoring my late husband, Kaya Tunjer, uh, with his induction into the Space Camp Hall of Fame. <clears throat> when Space Camp first opened in June 2000, Kaya had a plaque made to put at the entrance of Space Camp Turkey. It's still there. It reads, a gift to the youth of the world, and he signed his name under it. Kaya's success as a businessman and developer of the Aegean Free Zone gave him opportunities to do many things. What he chose to do reveals his character and what he found important. <clears throat> Last year, I went with a colleague to visit one of the very successful companies at the Aegean Free Zone, where Space Camp is located. We went to the offices of this high-tech factory. It was made of the finest materials. There was a marble reflecting pool. The cabinets were covered with the finest Italian leather. No expense was spared. After I left, I told my colleague, or I said to her, Kaya could have had an office like that. Instead, he built Space Camp Turkey. Although Kaya created a nonprofit, the Global Friendship Through Space Education, out of necessity, I mean, the first few years, very few kids came, were coming. But over the years, it has evolved into something quite wonderful. So now every summer, Space Camp Turkey offers eight international sessions. At each six-day uh, six session, at least five countries uh, are representative with, represented with 12 uh, campers from each country. And we mix the kids up on the teams. They come in and they're divided into teams of 12. So we'll put three Turks, three Greeks, three Germans, three, we mix them all up. And uh, the common language is English. And space is the perfect, uh, space science, is, it's the perfect neutral subject to give young people from different, often opposing cultures, projects to work on where they are no longer from a certain country, but they're a member of the Jupiter team or the Sun team. This is what global friendship is about, and it has succeeded in a way, way beyond what we had imagined. We've gotten incredible testimonials over the years, uh, seeing kids from different countries, keeping up friendships and breaking down barriers between people who wouldn't normally uh, associate with each other. The Global Friendship has provided over 6,000 scholarships for young people from 30 countries over the years to, to these summer sessions. Scott will tell you about all the other programs Space Camp Turkey offers. Uh, Global Friendship also launched an innovative year-long program that connects school groups in Turkey and the United States, and now more recently, Canada, Poland, and Italy. This is the Partner School Science Program. And I was surprised and pleasantly surprised. Mel, could you raise your hand? Mel Prater came here from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He was part of this program for how many years? Five, and he brought kids over to Space Camp Turkey for five summers. And if you get a chance, talk to Mel about, about this program. So it's called the Partners School Science Program. So the students from the partner schools, it's an American school and a Turkish school, <clears throat> they work all year long on uh, projects with, through NASA's distance learning website via email. And when they've completed uh, a required number of lessons, 
they qualify for a three-way video conference between the two schools and a NASA representative. And some are able to get together uh, at Space Camp Turkey during a special summer session called EPAL Week. I would like to thank Scott Anderson. Could you stand up? <laughs> He's here tonight. Scott has played a major role in uh, arranging, facilitating these video conferences. There's a great time difference between here, Scott's office is right here, uh, and Turkey, sometimes uh, California, New York, and uh, we've had over 100 successful video conferences over the years. And to uh, show our appreciation to Scott, uh, we invited him to Space Camp Turkey for the past two summers where he found out that he was somewhat of a celebrity. The kids would come up with their cameras asking for photos. He thought they wanted him to take a photo of them. No, they wanted a photo of him with them. Yeah. So last month, I was in Izmir in, in, in Turkey uh, during EPAL week at Space Camp, uh, EPAL week at Space Camp Turkey. The delegation from Montreal, Canada, somewhat ironic because they have their own space camp, they gave me a letter from the principal of the Children's World Academy in Montreal about the Partners School Science Program. He wrote, we are able to offer our students an international educational experience like none other. Throughout the school year, an extracurricular program we call Space Club promotes science and space education as well as inter international exchange for 25 students. This program has now become an established part of the culture of Children's World Academy it distinguishes our school. Space Camp Turkey not only stimulates interest in math and science, it promotes friendship between young people from different countries and opens young minds to new possibilities. I am proud to continue what Kaya started and offer this often life-changing experience to the youth of the world. Thank you. Kaya Tenser was my grandfather. I called him Dede. Thanks to him, I have been interested in space. After attending Space Camp Turkey for the first time this summer, I look forward to learning more about space. I am happy to be here to see my grandfather inducted to the Space Camp Hall of Fame. I don't know if I can beat that. Uh, Kaya, Kaya really made a difference in people's lives. For me, that difference occurred in April of 1998. Kaya said, Scott, I heard, I heard you going back to the States to look for a job. Fact of the matter, I was leaving on a jet plane just three hours later to do just that. Yes, sir, I replied. Things aren't quite working out for me here in Turkey, professionally speaking. Well, this may interest you, Kaya remarked. Maybe not. I'm seriously thinking about opening a space camp. It will be under license with the Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and I need someone to get it started. It was a flattering job offer. It was an unknown. It sounded really cool. But the skeptical side of my brain thought, a space camp in Turkey? How can that be? What in the world does Turkey have in common with launching rockets into lower Earth orbit? The more I listened to him, 
it was clear that Cain had a vision, a dream, and he was determined to make it happen. Along with a modern industrial park, he wanted to establish a space camp. He wanted to give back to his country. Like the space explorers in this room, Kaya was a risk taker. He was a mega builder. I shrugged, smiled, and finally said, this certainly sounds like a challenge, and I do look forward to challenges. Good, Kaya replied. I'm also thinking this could be another way to attract high-tech companies to the Aegean Free Zone, and at the same time, provide educational opportunities to the young people around Turkey. Who knows? Maybe around the world. That's how the Space Camp Turkey project started. Two years later, on June 12, 2000, Space Camp Turkey opened. Kaya's friend and Turkish-American NASA engineer Ismail Akbay was there. His brother is here tonight. Ish had been part of Dr. Braun's team at Marshall Space Flight Center and a longtime friend of the Huntsville Space Camp. Mercury astronaut Scott Carpenter was there. He was our featured speaker. Mr. Ed Mills, who worked with me on the Boeing business plan and is seated in our audience tonight, was also there. Take a bow, Ed. It was a grand opening, and everyone was fired up, ready to launch the world's newest space camp in Turkey. It was, in Kaya's words, a gift to the youth of the world. Unfortunately, the country experienced an economic crisis in 2001, which really stifled our business. We reached just half our capacity. But it was because of this setback, a revelation occurred, and Kaya and his space camp dream persevered. Kaya and his wife, Mary, said, the heck with this. By golly, we're going to fill this camp with kids. And we'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. In 2002, they formed the nonprofit Global Friendship Through Space Education. And the Tungers started doling out scholarships. They came, whether they were Turkish orphans, gifted children from Kazakhstan, Chinese earthquake victims, or disadvantaged American kids. There were Palestinians and Israelis, Greeks and Turks, under one roof, sharing common interests and goals. They all came. They worked together as a team, and they all had a great time. In the last 12 years, Space Camp Turkey's Global Friendship Through Space Education Foundation has provided more than 6,000 scholarships to young people from 30 countries. In recognition of his philanthropic efforts, Kaya was awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor in 2004. This prestigious award pays tribute to American citizens for their outstanding contributions to their own ethnic groups, their ancestral countries, and American society. Along the way, we've also had our share of successful alumni. Mr. Yunus Sazmaz graduated from MIT in electrical engineering and computer science and went to work for Oracle in the U.S. as a software engineer. Ms. Buze Shengur became a doctor and is with the Mayo Cl uh, Clinic College of Medicine at Harvard. Mr. Ibrahim Halil Mir Miralolu completed his degree in molecular biology and genetics at Istanbul Technical University. In the words of Ibrahim, that summer, going to space at space camp, sitting in the same shuttle seat as the smartest people at NASA, 
gave the most precious lesson to me in my life, to respect my dreams. I can tell you for sure that the adventure we lived in those days changed my life and my friends' lives completely. In 2010, Space Camp Turkey became, uh, began making a modest profit and celebrated its, celebrated its status as one of only three space camps in the world and a premier international camp. Over the last 15 years, Space Camp Turkey has hosted 23 astronauts and cosmonauts to include Owen Garriott's surprise appearance in 1999, Apollo 16 astronaut Charlie Duke in 2013, and most recently Rick Linehan. Our international marketing team, led by Beth Mitchell, has connected with schools throughout the Middle East to include United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Jordan, Qatar, Lebanon, and Israel by offering a special customized outer space adventure program. COSA is a special package program that provides students and teachers a space camp experience, tours of archaeological and cultural sites, and the opportunity to perform community service. Our slogan is training, teamwork, and technology. Over the past two years, we have upgraded our facilities and curriculum to include a Space Quest exhibit, new robotics lab, Mars rover simulator, new digi uh, digital planetarium, leadership development course, and double module mock-up of the International Space Station. As of today, we have hosted over 150,000 youth and adults from 55 countries. That equates to about, I'm sorry, 50 countries. That equates to about 25% of the countries in the world. I believe Kaya would be pretty proud of that. Turkish President Abdullah Gul made the following remarks after his visit to our space camp in May of 2011. President Gould said, I believe that Space Camp Turkey, which aims to educate youth in the space sciences, sciences with special teaching activities and to support student self-development, fulfills a very, a very important service. I would like to congratulate Kaya Tunjer for bringing this facility to our country and extend my appreciation to his entire staff. In conclusion, I'd like to point out that Kaya had, had a great sense of humor when speaking before large gatherings like this. My guess is most of you have already heard this joke a million and a half times. Nonetheless, I'd like to share one of his favorite witticisms with you. At an international gathering, Kaya would say, a Russian, an American, and Tamil, a Turk from the Black Sea area, we're talking about their respective countries' achievements. Kaya would continue. The Russian boasted, we were the first to go to space. Then the American said, but we were the first to land on the moon. Tamil, not to be outdone, said, well, that's nothing. We will be the first to land on the sun. Both the Russian and the American replied, are you crazy? You can't go to the sun, you'll burn up. Aha, uh -huh, Tamil replied, <clears throat> do you think we're crazy? We're going at night. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Mary, Sylvie, and Scott. Congratulations to all this year's inductees, and thank you to all the Space Camp alumni and Hall of Famers that are celebrating with us tonight. And a special thank you to the Space Camp Hall of Fame members in Houston for putting together the presentation for Samantha there. Nominations are now open for the 2015 class with the induction ceremony to be held here in the Saturn V Hall next summer. A special thank you goes out to Jake Zatskin, who produced the amazing videos you saw. Jake works for the National Association of Broadcasters in Washington, D.C., and is the husband of Alumni Advancement Board member, who you uh, saw earlier up here, Mrs. Whitney Bowman Zatskin. Please help me thank Jake for the many hours he put in to creating the biographies for tonight's inductees. This concludes the 2014 Space Camp Hall of Fame induction ceremony, but there's still plenty to see as you have one last chance to enter a winning bid on your favorite silent auction item. Remember, all proceeds from this silent auction go to benefit the U.S. Space and Rocket Center's Space Camp Scholarship Fund. Once the auction officially ends in about 15 minutes, tonight's special screening of the 2014 documentary, I Want to Be an Astronaut, will begin in the digital theater at the other end of the Saturn V Hall. The film will be followed by a panel discussion featuring a few of the special guests we have with us tonight. I hope you will join us for this inspiring film. Again, thank you for being here tonight to support Space Camp and our mission to inspire the next generation of explorers. If you haven't already, be sure to visit the center to experience our GPS adventures, feature exhibit before it leaves for its next destination. And coming up on August 25th, is a brand new traveling exhibition from the Smithsonian called Black Wings, which tells the story of how African-American aviators shattered barriers of racial discrimination in the early 20th century to take to the sky, and how their legacy inspired generations of young men and women to follow their dreams of flight. I hope all of you have a wonderful evening, and please enjoy I Want to Be an Astronaut. Good evening.